Hey everyone, my name's Sebastian and welcome to Atmos Seeker. In this episode, I'm going to be making a way to disguise the microfogger in some dungeon terrain. If you don't know what that is, it's this little guy right here. You can follow the links in the description or the cards on how to make one. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. On the channel, I've experimented with a lot of techniques for creating immersive tabletop gaming atmosphere and dynamic terrain and props. With the dungeon fogger, I wanted it to have a small table footprint and blend in well with conventional dungeon terrain. The first part of the build was working out how to have the fog exit the terrain. So I got to work on cutting up some EVA foam into the shape of a stonework arch. So why EVA foam? Other than being my usual go-to material, it's water resistant. So if any spillage did occur, it's not going to expand and warp. I started by cutting out an arch shape and then added detail to it with blades and scissors. A lot of guesswork on the measurements here, but I knew I had to be wide enough for the microfogger nozzle and tall enough that I could put a lid over the top. I also tried to keep in mind the size of the bricks so that the arch would blend in nicely with the rest of the piece. At the front here, I wanted to make some dungeony looking bars. For this, I used some gutter mesh, which turned out was a perfect fit because of the one centimeter grid on the mesh. This was a happy accident that it fit snugly, so I would suggest making the archway to fit whatever mesh you end up using. For the base, I cut some EVA foam a centimeter wider than each side of the archway. That's to make sure that there's enough space for the bricks I'll be placing around the edges. As for the length, I made it long enough to conceal the fogger and lay bricks around it. Speaking of bricks, we're going to need a whole bunch of them. So I cut some one centimeter wide strips and then cut those into two centimeter long bricks. To add some detail, you can make some nicks and cuts on the edges of the bricks with some scissors. Then it's all about laying them down with some hot glue. To get some variety, you can offset the depth of some of the bricks by slicing them a little bit thinner. To make sure that the fogger lies flat inside, I added a couple of pieces of foam. One at the back to help keep the fogger level, and one at the front just because the nozzle didn't quite line up well with the bars. For the lid, it was basically the same proportions as the base with some nicks and cuts to make it look a little bit more like stone. I also added a couple of pieces of foam underneath, the same width as the inner chamber, so that it would fit snugly on top. With all that done, I give it a blast with the heat gun to seal up the EVA foam and get rid of all those hot glue wisps. After giving it a prime with some matte black acrylic, I thought this was a great chance to practice my uh, mediocre airbrushing skills. The first pass with some light grey, it did some basic stone shading and gave some depth to the shadows. Going for a classic dungeon look, I grabbed some Viridian to give it a bluish greenish tint. To pick up some of that brickwork, I grabbed some tan acrylic and gave it a dry brushing to hit those high details and edges. To dirty it up a bit, I dry brushed a bit heavier some burnt umber in some of the recesses and low spots. I know technically I didn't have to paint the inside, but I also thought that you could use it as a prison cell if you don't have the fogger in there. Keen to experiment a bit more with the airbrush, I grabbed some lime green acrylic ink. I used it to create some mossy algae looking spots on the terrain. I gotta say, using the inks in the airbrush are my new favorite medium, as you don't have to fuss as much with airbrush thinner and the pigment is really vibrant and doesn't clog in the airbrush. Then a little extra detail on the bars here with some copper paint for a rust effect. Now for sealing it all in, I wanted something a bit tougher in case there were any residue from using the microfogger. I hit it with this durable furniture varnish and because it came up with a bit more of a satin finish after drying, I gave it the spray with the usual matte varnish. I'd also suggest this for any terrain in close proximity to the mist. It's a really simple piece of terrain and it blends in really well with some dungeon tiles. 
If you want to modify the fog a bit more, here are a couple of tips. Some pipes from Mantic can make some great modifiers for a sewer look. Just place them a centimetre or two away from the nozzle as there's a venturi effect that sucks in the mist. Right up against the nozzle and it'll kill the output of that fog. If you want to tint the fog or give it some volume, some underlighting can really help to enhance it. These colour change tea lights are great to place in and around the terrain, helping to illuminate that fog. So that was a way to conceal the microfogger in terrain, along with a couple of tips to get some different effects. Be sure to smash that like button if you liked the video, and if you have any other ideas of how to integrate the fogger into terrain, let me know in the comments. A big thank you to my amazing patrons, and a shout out to Chris Andrus at our Seeketeer. Until next time, I'm Sebastian, and let's create and inspire. See you next time.